I don't think that people know how institutionalized they are. And when I say that, it's because usually when we talk about the institutionalization of a person, we usually talk about a uh, um, formerly incarcerated person. Mm-hmm. But we are institutionalized at our jobs, universities. Like, we Facts. are taught to act right or you will not be here. Mm-hmm. Like, that. that's just how our system is set up. We're extending the invitations to make sure that we have lots of different kinds of people, but there are some people who are just not ready to like approach the conversation in, in anticipation of being triggered yeah. and losing control. A lot of dynamics at play here. Mm-hmm. I was saying like, we're used to this as black people because we'll sit across from each mm-hmm. other and be like, <gasps> I almost tried to fight somebody before, so I get it. <laughs> but it's also like, it's just, a, it, we're used to it. I feel like, like for us, it's very much like, let's go, Who is, who's coming to be there? Like the Queen and Jay are the only people who will be like, who all gonna be there? Cause I don't feel like having a headache. But they'll come, right. but they will come. But they're like, just, I need a warning. Right, I need to pop but, a few Advil before I come exactly, so they don't get exactly. agitated. But we gonna come. Other, like a lot of people, a lot of other people just have a little bit of a trepidation that mirrors how it was when we first started. Yeah. Like, you know when we first started, people were like, I don't know, like, I don't know if I didn't say that. People don't I cancel, I'm not coming. Get doxxed and then they're yeah. like, look at what this person said. Y'all will be so fast to get information for Beyonce. Y'all will go and follow her to Texas, New York, and leave her leave the country to go see her, but y'all can't get information for something that's happening right now in real time. And I wanted to highlight this point that you made about how it wasn't the majority. It was a, 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 a great minority that pushed a lot of our things forward as yeah. far as social justice is concerned. And so I'm looking at things right now and I'm looking at these kids on these college campuses. I'm looking at the black people, the white people, the Asian people, the native people, the indigenous people who are just like, yo, we're gonna march for these people because we get it. And so I'm watching kids getting thrown this way and that way, getting arrested, getting locked up which is fucking crazy. Mm -hmm. And at the same time, watching fucking Joe Scarsborough on fucking like Joe in the morning on MSNBC saying things like, we need to get some discipline out there. These kids think that they're, you know, they're they're, they're in charge and we need to show them some discipline. We're sorting through this as a country and this is not helping. This is not helping the people of Gaza and this is not helping... Uh, those of us who want to fight fascism in America. When do democracies uh, crumble? It's when they lose control of currencies. Inflation gets out of control. People lose all their savings. We've seen that historically in Weimar and other places. Or when you see scenes like this. And if you give people a choice and they, they say, well, I may be uncomfortable with some of the politics of some sides, but we need physical safety. We need order. This, this is seen as a real threat to democracy. This is in many ways, I think, school authorities who have lost control of their campuses. They didn't set clear rules. They weren't prepared to back them up. So now you've got to take back the campuses. They never should have lost them in the by, first place. By the place, way, bro. let's go to the split screen of the riots going on in Florida. Oh, wait. There are no riots going on at the University of Florida because the president said, we don't run a daycare center here. As if this didn't happen in his generation. Exactly. Vietnam, in Vietnam War. <laughs> Vietnam War. I mean, y'all don't remember that shit? <laughs> The apartheid in South Africa, y'all don't remember yeah. that shit when um, college students were protesting? Yes. Here's what I realize about people. I just want to know if you had the same observation. What I've seen is that a lot of these people were the same ones who considered themselves to be Republicans and conservatives, right? As black people, we saw the writing on the wall. These motherfuckers are out of control. They want to take away women's rights. They want to take away queer rights. They want to take away black people's rights. And we've gotten to see the worst of them get to power. And so we saw a lot of our fears come to pass. Mm -hmm. And so those same white people, like a Joe Scarsborough, is now like, that Trump is out of control. But you voted for him. How come Mm -hmm. you didn't see it? How come you didn't get it? And so I follow that line. You're the same people who didn't get it at that time, but now you're denouncing him. But you're, and you're the same people right now who can't see that people are fighting for an actual real cause. And so you're going to get left behind again. And now it's going to have to wait another fucking six months or until this um, psychopath gets elected mm-hmm. before you actually speak truth to power in a way where we can actually call people in and say, like, listen, 
we know that there's a lot of stuff that's going on right now that is putting all of us in imminent danger. But a sort of refusal to like acknowledge what's happening, or I don't know if it's a morality thing that mm-hmm. these people are struggling with. Actually, I do think that's what it is. But I don't know all of what's going in their minds, but I've, been, I've seen the writing on the wall in that you're wrong about that, you're wrong about this. What, what do you think is going on in the media sector in, in particular with a lot of the talking heads do you think that it's because they're just simply falling in line? Do you think that it's racism? Or do you think that people have been indoctrinated in what we now understand to be Zionism, where they're just villainizing these kids, even though they tend to be on the right side of history? Mm-hmm. There's a lot there. So this is what the media always does. Yeah. Um, the media tells the story that the ruling class wants it to tell. Yeah. No matter what. Period. And that is why folks who want to engage with media us kind of are like this about it because yeah. we we know what it has to be for you to like fruitfully live in this space mm-hmm. i think that we are we're all institutionalized and indoctrinated in these systems and i don't think that people know how institutionalized they are. And when I say that, it's because usually when we talk about the institu- institutionalization of a person, we usually talk about a uh, um, formerly incarcerated person. Mm-hmm. But we are institutionalized at our jobs, universities. Like, we Facts. are taught to act right or you will not be here. Mm-hmm. Like, that. that's just how our system is set up. It's very carceral. Since that last conversation you talked about, I'm way more way more abolitionist and understand that like right. you can't be throwing motherfuckers away it doesn't do anything for the prolonged collective when it comes to creating peace a thought that i have when you were talking about the children um the young adults mm-hmm. at the um at the universities and stuff i think my frustration with i guess these revolutionary events that are happening in our lives is that for the most for people who are not in it you only see the reaction to a harm yeah and not like the like the prolonged things that led to where we are in this moment Absolutely. and that is what messes a lot of things up for a lot of people october 7th was the date when it was like shit went down and it was like 1948 yeah that part <laughs> that part is when you, you know what I mean? Yes. So, and and people have been organizing since. Yeah. Since that, this is not like a a a, a new occurrence. I always want to be optimistic, but the thing that makes me pessimistic is that the ruling class has been organizing as well yeah. all of this time, and yeah. they have the capital to back up all the organizing they've been doing. Absolutely. And that's what we're seeing now. Because even when it comes to the the um, after George Floyd and, and the rights that we are seeing being repealed for women and black people, that was already in the works before George Floyd. Yeah, that was already in the works. That was already the plan. These people have been organizing to this to get rid of Roe versus Wade since it passed. Yeah, since the day it passed, it was like, all right, let's get to work. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. But when you're a marginalized person, you cannot zone in in that way because life is fucking hard. You're trying to eat. Yes, life Literally. is hard. Yes, yes. You can't zone in in that way, but because these people are the ruling class, they're able to organize in ways that we cannot because we have to survive and organize. Facts, facts. And I appreciate that because I didn't know shit about the Nakba. I'm not going to lie. I did not know shit about it. All I knew was the very basics because I prepped for that episode (laughs) five years ago. And that's the only reason why I found out about the Nakba. And even then, it was kind of like, okay, so this is when they came and they colonized. This is when the British and the Americans helped colonize Mm -hmm. Palestine. And it was like, it didn't really go much further than that for me outside of like contextualizing that. I was like, okay, so we have to talk about race because white supremacy is backing this whole situation. Mm -hmm. And so I think for a lot of people, especially the young folks, they are in systems, they are in school where they're actually being able to get this type of education. They're learning. Their friends are Palestinians. And also, you don't have no job. No, that's not that's not necessarily true. You can't have a job while you're in college. But you have 
arguably a lot less stressors. Yeah. So the fact that these kids are able to practice and to organize and, and make demands is a beautiful, beautiful thing. And what I've noticed is... And they're not jaded yet. And they're not jaded they're yet. Not jaded they're not Because we marched blisters and everything. We've been marching. And it's kind of like, you know, you hear people, a lot of older people like, marching doesn't work. Like you start getting into those conversations. Yes. These kids ain't trying to hear that shit. Yeah. They're like, we can make change. And we have seen that they've actually been able to make change over the years. Now, one of the most interesting things that are happening right now it's this conversation about these kids they don't get it they're 18 years old they can vote mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and people are like they're gonna ruin this country they're gonna get donald trump elected again because they're threatening not to vote they're threatening to withhold their vote and so there's this thing happening where now they're being educated and so this system that we were just talking about where everybody has gotten indoctrinated into they are learning things so con in such such in such contradiction to what we have been taught or what your parents think mm -hmm. or what any other you know like demographic of people who have been um, subjected to the white supremacist capitalistic system have understood and so now like how it was black people's responsibility to vote in joe biden mm -hmm is now it's the children and black people's responsibility again to make sure that Joe Biden gets in again. And we've had conversations we about always, voting before. Like, like, why are we in it? Like, like why are we in this? <laughs> but I'm curious to know because it, there seems to be like a level that we're going to now, which is really about this is this could be the end of democracy as we know it if we do not make sure that Biden gets into office again. And they're trying to use a bridge from these children as a means to say, like, they can possibly get this guy elected again. And I'm curious just to know how do you feel about whether or not this election is like the most important election of all time? I'm so tired of every election being the most important election of all time. Like, I feel like every election since I was able to vote was like... <laughs> The, the most important election of all time. Uh, yeah, and like, if it takes just Trump or just if that's if that's all it takes for democracy to not exist, did it really exist? Mm. Were we really in a democracy? Mm -hmm. I couldn't vote when um, the second George Bush became president, mm -hmm. but. I feel like since that president, everyone was every president was like, you gotta this is it, vote or die. And if every election is like that, democracy might die. Mm -hmm. Fragile as fuck. We don't live in a democracy. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We don't live in a democracy. Mm -hmm. We don't. We live in a fascist country. We need to be like fucking honest about that. There's no way that a country that has existed for it's, it's a young country in comparison to other the other colonial powers is at 2024 still talking about the threat of democracy and as if it's just a threat. Yeah. Why would it just be a threat at this point? Yeah. I mean, you know, and that's an interesting part about this too is the internet because look what has happened. They done... TikTok bad. Like, I mean, like, yo, they are going so hard. And to me, like, maybe that's where this conversation does have a little bit of validity. Because the way that folks are responding, and you talked about this before, about Roe Ro versus Wade. The day that Roe versus Wade was passed was the exact same day that people were like, we need to get that court overturned immediately yeah. because we need to reverse this decision. And it fucking worked. And so when I see people, when I see the government literally changing the definition of anti-Semitism, to include anti-Zionism, which then automatically makes these college kids anti-Semitic. Anti yes. It makes me feel like the banning of a TikTok, the way that Instagram has completely censored people is, a, is something that's like very new, especially, it, well, not new, but it's a way that black people understood because a lot of our shit has been suppressed. Yeah. But for a lot of these white folks, the same white folks who are getting like, thrown to the ground and arrested when we understand that is is something that I'm feeling like, oh, wow, they there's something going on here that these people, by the, the powers that be, the ones that we can name and the ones that we don't know their names, mm -hmm. they are moving and they're mobilizing in ways that are extremely reactionary to the way that people are saying, like, we don't give a fuck in this moment. And so I have a very real fear personally of what I know a Donald Trump is like. Like I Biden, I think is, I call him genocide, Joe. I call him Jenny Joey. I get it. I call him Sleepy Joe. Sleepy. He's very, he's very tired. He's very, <laughs> yeah, very tired. And I'm Joe. nervous. I'm nervous about that. Mm -hmm. But if I'm but to be really, really honest, when I look at someone like a Trump who is unfortunately also a megalomaniac and a sociopath and a you know, I don't like to call people narcissists because that's triggering for a lot of people. But as someone who is visibly showing signs of psychopathy. Mm -hmm. This is where it gets scary for me. A part of me is just like, burn it all down to the ground. 
whatever. We're going to go where the fuck we got to go. But it's also like, am I going to like sit back and not vote? Am I going to like, like, what am I going to do? And I don't have the answers right mm-hmm. now because even the other day I put on my threads, like I am not, no matter what happens, I'm not voting for Jenny Joey. Mm-hmm. I refuse because now I'm seeing these babies get fucked up. And now because I'm a, I, in my big age, these are babies to me. And I'm like, we're just in a whole different, it feels different. And so a part of me is just like going between burn it down or like putting, or looking for my cape and trying to figure out how do we save this? How do we sort of like appeal to a Biden's sensibilities when someone like Trump seems like he has none? And I'm wondering for you, do you ever feel like that or is it just me or, or you're just feeling like fuck it all? Um, I always kind of feel like fuck it all. <laughs> um, but that's not, what does that do for the collective? What does mm-hmm. that do for community? I do a lot of peace education work, conflict resolution work or whatever. And there's a, I think it was a letter that Martin Luther King wrote one of the times when he was in jail and he talked about the two different kinds of peace. Mm-hmm. So there's negative peace and there's positive peace. Mm-hmm. So negative peace is kind of like stopping the harm right now. So like a ceasefire is negative peace. Okay. Um, let's say you, you see a man trying to assault me. You make sure he doesn't. That's negative peace. So you stop the harm, but we haven't as a collective created the framework so that there's actual peace Mm -hmm. so we haven't done we haven't created the framework or the systems or whatever to make it so that a woman is in harm on the street yeah we haven't and that's the positive piece because that's the long lasting yeah piece and i think that we focus so much on the negative piece so stop you know ceasefire and this and this and that and it's good for a temporary pause and harm but it does the longevity in that doesn't exist Mm -hmm. and i think that because we go through so many cycles of harm that when do you have the time well there are people who do have the time but how do you collectively have the time to proactively create frameworks and systems and then react to what happened the day before and i think that what happens is well what is needed is that we understand everyone in the community's role and getting to the proactive piece. Yeah. So there are people who are really good at the react, the, the it's react, it's, I'm using other language, but mm-hmm. I'll say it. So there's people who are really good at the negative piece. So yeah. they're good at stopping the immediate harm and this and this and that. And that's great that they do that. But then there's also people who are good at creating the um, positive piece, the frameworks and systems that we need to put in place so that none of that harm happens again. Mm -hmm. And I think that a lot of times the people who go about the peace are not in alignment. Wow. And that, that is the thing. So if we could understand the people who are creating the frameworks and doing, creating the systems and, you know, like, you know, people who like, I'm an abolitionist, I'm a this, those are long-term positive peace frameworks that I want Right. Yeah. But if you're doing that and then the person who is only focused on a negative piece doesn't see the value in this and a person who is the doing a positive piece doesn't see the value in this. What are we wow. coming together to do? One hundred percent. What results are we going to get? Wow. Wow. Very, very well said. It's this idea that like this is a machine. We have to work in tandem with each other. Yes. Like the wheels have to work. The pedals have to ex- work. Ex- All of it has exactly. to work together because otherwise we're screwed. Yeah. Really, really well said. So, I mean, like, this is a great place to end on, but I want to know, is there anything, like, have you sat down with this and had any thoughts to yourself that you just would really, really want to get across? Any, anything that you've thought in the process? Because I know that you are a thinker. And shout out to Jay. Jay, we miss you. <laughs> but one thing that I really love about y'all is how much you sort of, like, what you just did was you took something that was like can kind of be in the air, this idea of peace, and you made it more tangible. Mm-hmm. You can stop something now and you can build frameworks. And I think that's something really, really great to end on. But is there anything else that you've been sort of like thinking about or um, evaluating through this process that you would like the audience to know or anybody to think of, specifically black folks? Because mm-hmm. I think right now we're trying to figure something out as a community. We're trying to figure out there's something big happening. We have an election coming up Mm -hmm. and that's big. And black people have a lot of pressure on us to sort of make the right decision and be the moral compass of the world. But this is beyond us. This is like one of the first times that we're really seeing in our lifetime, people really focus on another population and they have the nerve to drop bombs on these people. Mm -hmm. So do you have any sort of like last words for the community? Honestly, um, 
you gotta pour into yourself. Mm-hmm. Like this world is shitty. Shitty. It is shitty. shitty. And like I think that having the ability to still like like yourself, mm-hmm. having the ability to still um accept yourself is important. The only time I care about individualism, because I don't, is when it comes to fulfilling yourself yeah. so that you can pour into a community. Yes, yes, yes. Right? And, and it for me, it would be remiss to talk about these systems and not talk about how there's this this things you just I don't I don't know what they are for every individual but I I feel like it's really really important that there are things that you do for you and I know that that's something that seems really simple and like really small in comparison to the things that we were talking about for this whole conversation but I do think that it's very easy to lose yourself even in oppression yeah yeah and I agree with you on that because Again, we're in a very weird fucking time. We're literally living in the matrix. What do they say? About 10 10 hours every day people spend on social media or online, the people who have it? 10 hours on your phone a day. And you can really lose yourself. And you can get desensitized. And... Last thing that I'll say off of the hill, off of the heels of your point is that I spoke with Nelly by Nature. I don't know if you know her, if you've seen her online. Mm -hmm. And she said she made this comparison about ghosting about like how people ghost each other in the dating experience Uh and then she likened it to how people ghost when it comes to these things that are happening in the world so you don't have you talked about it too having the being able to sustain having the stamina yeah so you need to pour into yourself in order to be able to have that stamina yeah point especially as a black person yeah because it's like you have to fight on this front fight on that front and fight on every single front and sometimes it's like i can't so perhaps you know spending that time with ourselves is like the best way of getting to i mean i know i had to do that spend a lot of time just being quiet and trying to figure out like okay well i don't my bank account is looking funny I'm going to have to eat pancakes. Uh, I, You know, like, I'm mm-hmm. grateful to have those yeah. things. But how do you sort of, like, fight another fight when you're worried about those things? And it's, it's interesting. I did a, I had a, um, I did a recording yesterday where um, we were talking about, because it was for Black, not Black, Mental Health Month. This mm-hmm. is Mental Health Month. Mm-hmm. And that's what I was saying, because it's like, get therapy, get therapy, get therapy. And that's, I, I'm, I'm insane a therapist. But, like, also, like, niggas can't eat. Yeah. What is a therapist going to do? You know, you know what I mean. Like, yeah. like, and I'm as a person who is actively still in therapy, who is still actively like unemployed and da da figuring shit out. It is helpful that I have that. But at the end of the day, I be looking at her and I be like, yeah, but like, I still don't have a job, man. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> to be transparent, yeah. You know? And so it's hard. Mm-hmm. Life is not easy, and. To my knowledge, we only get one. You know, mm-hmm. I don't know, or whatever mm-hmm. the hell. And it's mm-hmm. like you have to find the pack, the pockets of like joy or ha- like you just, you just have to like. Yeah, that's something I just always offer. Like yeah. you, you, you just have to. You, like yeah, you just that's, have to. That's it. Find a pocket of joy. That's that's a great point to end on. Thank you, <laughs> thank you, Queen. <laughs> For Thanks. coming and blessing us. Thanks and um, I'm me. just so grateful for your voice. I think you've illuminated a very special pocket in this conversation mm-hmm. that I hope like really resonates with people. So y'all, make sure you follow Queen. Make sure you follow T with Queen and J. Subscribe, follow us. You know, Let us know how you feel about this conversation and we'll see you next time. Peace. This outside agitator narrative has been used for years and years in the similar playbook of how to discredit movements um, and saying like, oh, there are outside agitators that are actually the ones who are driving this movement. It's not actually CUNY students. It's not actually um, city college students. It's outside agitators. And there's none or very little evidence of that. Mm -hmm. Um, So it's never felt unsafe. I think this narrative around safety is designed to sow fear and division. Um, and I think it is true that there is, uh, there are many parts of this organizing that, that very genuinely make Jews uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I know a lot of Jews who are uncomfortable with the word intifada. I know a lot of Jews that are uncomfortable with, will often use the word Gaza instead of using the word Palestine because they can't bring themselves to say the word Palestine Mm -hmm. because it feels like it delegitimizes the existence of the state of Israel. Um, and so, or genocide even, you know, genocide is strange, you know, (laughs) inexplicably has become such a controversial word. Um, so I think I, I totally understand and can see why some Jews that, um, 
are kind of going through a political evolution in this moment are struggling with some of these ideas and phrases. Mm -hmm. um, and also being uncomfortable with the framing of a liberation movement is not the same thing as being unsafe. 